The Community Development Block Grant roots go back to the early 1970s when President Gerald Ford signed the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 into law. It had a goal of extinguishing poverty and urban blight. Today, the program is intended to provide a flexible funding stream for communities to make improvements that include infrastructure, transportation, community services, and housing to low and moderate income persons. For 42 years, the City of Albany and community partners have used CDBG funds to improve the lives of its citizens. Businesses have been funded, additional housing options have been created, and nonprofits have been able to serve the needs of the community. When we think about some of the programs that we administer, emergency repair programs, without CDBG, those are housing units that we're not able to rehabilitate. Or the agencies that we're able to provide public service funds to, Girls and Boys Clubs, Swiga Council on Aging, uh, Strive to Thrive, these are agencies that would be less able to uh, serve more individuals throughout their agencies. Or infrastructure improvements, public facility improvement. So when you think about CDBG overall and the funding that is given to the city, it truly makes an impact in our city and making us able to uh, assist more affordable housing efforts or individuals who are in need of assistance. One of our more, um, I guess one of the proudest properties that we were able to develop since I've been here was our Broadway Senior Villas. Uh, this was the development of 10 affordable units for our seniors which were all handicap accessible and it was completed early on last year. Uh, some public facility improvements, our Ritz Cultural Center, Jackson Heights, um, these were some of the public facilities that we've been able to improve over the uh, years. Even a walking park, things um, such as that. For our agencies, they Cares. Back in the 90s, after the flood, we've been able to produce and help them to construct uh, two to three daycares in low mod residential areas so that not only do they have affordable housing in those communities, but also uh, available daycare services. We've been also able to, with our funding, provide loans to businesses. Uh, when we think about uh, Moe's, Little Caesars, CDBG funds and Economic Development Administration funds have been instrumental in creating opportunities, business opportunities, which results in jobs for low-income residents within our community. Fair housing was a law that was put into place back in 1968. Actually, the day marks the 49th year for the Fair Housing Act, which wants to ensure that everybody had an equal opportunity for its housing and housing choice goals. We are regardless of their race, color, national origin, disability, family status. The law says you have a right to live anywhere you want, provided you have the means to pay for it. Yes, National Community Development Week will be a great celebration for individuals to come out uh, within our community for a week-long celebration. At this time, we have the opportunity to, to, to promote several of our programs. We have celebrated National Community Development Week um, for many years. Actually, we've um, won the John A. Sasso Award. We won it five years straight. These issues are so important to the community because we could actually be facing the elimination of, fun, of funding and should we do that we would like for the individuals and communities to know how to go forward and these workshops are designed to help them move forward with or without these fundings. Our funds help low to moderate income individuals. I mean, with the services that we provide, we, we have funded five agencies for 20, 2016, 2017, and these agencies provide various services. The services include serving youth, uh, our youth, our senior citizens, uh, disabled, abused individuals, and having these funds help the help these agencies carry out such programs and it allows them to serve more individuals and facing the challenges again without the funding they might not be able to serve as many individuals as they do now what we do we are the eyes and ears for the community uh, to go out and get the community concerns and bring back to the board to and implement something that we can affect our community and make it better in a positive way. Because the service is so needed when you go around to the different programs that we fund, 
uh, you can just see the knees and, the, and they don't have enough already is in to cut it I mean I don't know what will happen here in Doherty County but we do our primary service is daycare for people with dementia plus we do in-home respite for uh, for those who also have dementia we started back in the 1980s as a mission of the downtown churches in fact our building still belongs to First Methodist Church we seek funding through the CVBG grant and we've been very fortunate to, to get it several times. We got it this past year and what we do, um, about 60-65% of our money comes through the Sawika Council on Aging and uh, so that means we raise the rest of it and how we do that is we do a, a fundraiser each year but we also write grants. Any, any place that we can uh, can identify that would be a likely funding source for us and CDBG has been very good to us. We have all sorts of activities. We have physical and mental and intellectual. Um, we do crafts. The types of activities that we do is bingo, bowling. Um, we have special guests that come in that do crafts on certain days with our clients that volunteer. We also do um, uh, word searches, puzzles, we try to keep the mind busy. Um, we also do movie day and chair aerobics, dancing through the decades. We do all sorts of activities to keep them um, mobile and just active and socialization going through the, the, the center. Um, our program is very limited and we do a lot with grants and funds and I do a lot of activities and crafts so that would really hurt me because I would um, be scrounging trying to find different funds to do my activities and that would take away from the clients and they really do enjoy those activities that we do um, because it keeps them busy, it keeps their anxiety down, it keeps them mobile um, and that would just be a shame for that to go away. Open Arm is a nonprofit organization here in our community that was um, founded in 1991 by a grand jury that seen that the need to assist youth in our community was needed here. Um, I've been working with Open Arms for 12 years. I work with the <clears throat> program called the Transitional Living Program where we assist homeless and runaway youth. In this program, we're teaching you how to be independent, product, productive citizens so they, they can make it on their own and they won't have to continue to rely on social service, but they have all the skills needed to make it on their own and won't have to go back to being homeless, but can survive. Strive to Thrive is Albany's initiative to empower families to move towards self-sufficiency. We've been around since 2009. We began out of the Chamber of Commerce because they saw the need as Albany was ranked the fourth poorest MSA in the country at that particular time. So our goal is to help families in any way that they need with resources, both physical, emotional resources to be able to move forward. Our goal is to help families get out of poverty to break the cycle, not only for their family, but generationally. So we want to build transgenerational legacy. They actually assist in funding our self-sufficiency program. And what that program is, it's a two-year program where individuals go through training such as parenting, personal development, professional development, and financial literacy. We work with families holistically to help them move uh, beyond where they are. Uh, also, it helps us with resources such as housing as well, so people can move into better situations. And a lot of times when people are able to move outside of the environments that they're currently living in, it helps them to grow and thrive. So that's our whole goal, to get people from surviving to thriving. Yes, Communities and Schools is the largest dropout prevention program in the nation. And we've done a lot of research has been done to actually show that the way that we work with students actually does work. And our model requires that we place a site coordinator in a school to be there to work directly with the students to help them with issues of attendance and uh, clothing or whatever. Whatever keeps them from being in school and staying in school are the things that we work with students on. So that site coordinator is vitally important to, to what we do. Well, it's been a blessing for us because for two years we've received a CDBG, a CDBG grant and that without that, we wouldn't be able to have that site coordinator. 
We, we have other monies that we put with it to fund that position, but really and truly, we, we wouldn't be able to have it if it wasn't for that. So we, we depend on it a lot, we appreciate it so much, and that means that we have a person on site who can be right there to respond to student needs. Well, I'd just like to say how good it has been to work with all of the people involved with administering the CDBG grants, and uh, we just enjoyed enjoyed it and appreciate it so much. Well, I had a great experience. I, I met uh, BJ and I met Ms. Hawkins and, and when I came in I had no idea how to purchase a home. I had the different lingo and the different things that you, you wonder about. And when I came in, they, they made me feel at home. It's like a family. And I came in and I, if I had any questions, I could come down and talk to them. And, and they made the process and the transition so much easier. And, I, and I, I'm glad I did. Well, I came in under the, the counseling because I didn't know. And I wanted to understand, you know, what an escrow was, what a, a, a mortgage and the interest rates and all these different things. I, I had no idea. And they sat me down and they talked. And, and it was a lot of different tools that I took advantage of over the years that helped me along the way also. So I went through the counseling program and it, 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 it was very valuable. It was a great experience. The first time I got those keys, and we were sitting down at the, uh, when, you, when you do the, um, closing. the closing. And so it was, it was an exciting moment. It was kind of, I was kind of nervous <clears throat> because I had never been through something like that before. And it was so exciting to get those keys and I had, and Miss BJ was sitting right there. And it was, it was an experience that I'll never ever forget. And, and just to be, just to have that security of having a home and know that you're a homeowner, I, I contributed all to, to this program. Okay, um, I got with Open Arms after I graduated Turner Job Corps with a gold book. And um, due to family circumstances back at home in Atlanta, I became homeless. And I decided not to go back to Atlanta and be homeless and just decided to stay here with my son. And Open Arms partnered with Job Corps to help me find somewhere to stay. And I started off in this shelter. Stayed in the shelter for about six months and I got into my own apartment through the program and I've been in the program for like a good year and a half. So I done did campaigns with United Way and traveled with them and I'm like the star student. I love them. They're like a second nature home for me, a second nature family. Chandra is the mom and I got a couple of aunties and big sisters through the staff and open arms is the definition of open arms. Like when I lost my dad recently this year, I knew because I didn't have any family to go straight to, I went straight to their office and when Chandra, she was in the meeting but she walked right on out and just open arms and let me cry all on a cute little dress. I think when I opened on, I probably would have been roaming the streets with a suitcase with me and my now five-year-old son, and which is something I'm thankful that did not happen because God has guided my footsteps every which way since I've been here and set the path plan for Open On to be my main place to plant my seed here. Um, I would like to tell Open Arms thank you so much for the opportunity and the blessings that you guys have gave me. Um, I will always be part of the family if you need me to come speak to future clients, clients, whatever. I will be there just a phone call away. It was an experience. At first I was very nervous, very scared uh, because I'd heard no several times and I was told about the program. So I came here and talked to a few people. At first I was discouraged and I was given, you know, the application, I had to go through all that process. And I came back and started to get excited. And the good thing is, the third time actually when I came back to talk to someone, I was excited about the business because I was going from being unemployed to becoming a business owner. And this was, I actually talked to somebody that was willing to take a chance and give me the opportunity to do this. She was just as excited for me as I was. 
and she even jumped up and down and held my hand and said, we are going to do this together. And I, I about cried. And we did. They, they gave me the loan and made it come true for me. I actually own the business now going on two years. Very successful where some people, com competitors, you know, said, no, she's not going to do it. She's a woman. She can't do it. But when I came here, I was given the confidence I needed and the opportunity to show that I can do it. And I did.